they are home. Which reminded me of our unity, how we always stick together, especially as Latinos. At a young age, I learned that even when you fall, you've got to get back up. At nine years old, we were living in my grandparents' garage here in Inglewood. And at that age, I was old enough to understand what was going on, but too young to actually do something about it. I learned that my grandparents came here and made something out of nothing. I found myself following their steps of bravery. Then and there was when that drive and ambition that was instilled in me activated. I knew that I had nothing and that we needed something. Never did I let my age, size, living in financial situation or the color of my skin stop me from following my dreams and getting my family out of where we were. <laughs> Growing up Mexican, our family was huge and because there were so many of us, let me tell you, it was hard to get people's attention in my house. So the only way to get attention was to put on talent shows in the living room. All right, I got him here. <clears throat> Because of that passion that I had for entertaining, I decided to pursue it at a professional level. I sat down with my parents in our garage and placed a contract on their laps, and I asked that although we weren't in the best financial situation, that they give me six months to try it out. I googled the top ten child agencies, made a couple calls and see what I needed to do to move forward, and although it seemed really far, it wasn't impossible. If those six months, if in those six months nothing happened, I promised my parents I would never bother them again. And if something did begin, then we could go from there. I told them I was down for negotiation. Yes, a nine-year-old negotiating. Talk about a midlife crisis. My parents, being the amazing parents that they are, supported me. If we're being completely honest, I had no idea what I was doing, let alone did I know what I was getting myself into. But I never thought not working out. I knew that every step was going to push me closer. Some steps were a little right, and the others a little left but they were always moving forward. I was 11 years old and working, traveling, on set, balancing schoolwork, taking meetings, going to auditions, the whole nine yards. I loved every second of it, but what I loved the most was the paycheck. Now, before you assume the number, let me tell you, it's not what you were thinking. My first paycheck was $230. Every paycheck went to groceries, school supplies, and of course, gas money, because I had my mom commuting from Inglewood to the Valley six days out of the week. And I don't know if you know any 11-year-olds that can drive themselves to work, so shout out to my mama. There was no better feeling than being able to contribute to providing for my family. With many sacrifices that we made, little by little we were getting somewhere. Making strides and slowly getting back on our feet. Every step and decision was always, always talked about with my parents. They taught me to never make money-motivated decisions that not every opportunity was going to be the right opportunity. And as I worked on my craft and discovered more and more about my passions in entertaining, I started rapping, writing my own songs, and hustling more and more. When I was 14 years old, I decided to post covers on YouTube. Little did I know, one of those covers would completely change my life. I did a cover of Frank Ocean's Novocaine. I made a cover of Bruno Mars and Eminem's song Lighters. And the one that changed the game was my cover of Jay-Z and Kanye's song Otis. I rapped 30 bars straight and shot a one-take music video on what I call a bro budget. And when I say bro budget, that's not even low budget. That's like, yo bro, I ain't got no money. But if you're in, I'm in, let's make something happen. So, with my cousins and a couple things to smash from my grandpa's garage, we made it work. A couple days after, we got news that a record label was very interested in taking a meeting with me. After one meeting, many other record labels wanted me to take a seat in their office. I took a couple trips to New York, had a couple meetings in LA, and then made my decision. I know I was only 14, but I was no child. By then, I already felt like an adult. I, was going, I wasn't going to let someone buy me with money. So many times, I felt as if they thought they could get me with the fancy things because I was the little Mexican girl who lived in the garage. But I knew I was more than that. I didn't want someone to buy me with money. I wanted to work for it. I wanted someone who saw something in me, beyond my story, and saw the talent. I wanted to sign to someone who believed in me, who saw some things in, who saw the same things as it was a new chapter and a new beginning for my family. Instead of rushing to plan a quinceanera, I saved my money when I turned 15, because I knew my family needed it. I began working in the studio with incredible producers and songwriters, and getting to collaborate and learn from artists who I idolized growing up. People like Pitbull, Will I Am, and my idol Jennifer Lopez. Hey, J-Lo! <laughs> Little did I know that even those experiences would be the beginning of friendships and many other collaborations. I worked in the studio, 
officially signed artist to a record label, I want to keep it real. I want to take it back to my roots and reintroduce myself to the public in a way that seemed to work the first time, by making a cover. I sat down and thought really hard of what song would be the perfect song to remake, and it hit me. Becky from the block. J-Lo, a strong Latina who influenced not only me, but every woman in my family, played a big part in my passion for music. In her original version, Jenny from the block, she sings from her perspective of what it's like to already be on the top, to not be fooled by the huge diamond rocks that she got. The song was made from the perspective of what it's like to have already reached fame. I, who did not have not one rock to fool anyone, wanted to remake from my perspective, a vow to my fans, family, and community that even when I make it to what people call the big time, I will always be the same girl. A vow to still walk to the Kelso market even though I get to walk them red carpets. To still hit up Randy's Donuts, which by the way, I don't think uh, my Power Ranger, you know, trainers and producers like the sound of that, but it's Randy's Donuts. Sorry, no exceptions. That promise is being kept. Um, <laughs> Things have definitely been hard and the journey hasn't been easy, but it all led, to this very, led up to this very moment. Today I don't stand before you as Becky G, today I stand in front of you as Becky from the block. The same proud Mexican-American who had a dream and made it happen with the support from her family, passion for music, and the fire that we carry as Latinos. I might not speak spending of myself for my family. I wanted to make my grandparents proud. Now, when I walk onto a stage, onto a set, and even sit down to do an interview, I think of them, because I know they're watching. To have their support means the world, because if it were you don't even speak Spanish. These are the remarks that us second and third generation born American Latinos often hear. But the truth is, the lack of language knowledge does not lessen the Latin blood running through our veins and the stories that our last names carry. There is no look to the passion we carry. Although my Spanish is flawed and I didn't grow up in Mexico, I take pride in my roots. My family's history and the fact that all the traditions and morals passed down have shaped me to who I am today is what it means to be second generation born Mexican American. Thank you for letting me share my American dream with you all and thank you to the city of Inglewood for making me and having me here today. It's truly an honor. I love you guys. Give it up for Becky G. Let me tell you, she gets to walk around the world, and the, every time she says she's from Englewood, it helps us. It helps us because she is such an intelligent and beautiful woman succeeding. So give it up for Becky G. Becky G, this is your home. You come back whenever you want. Mayor. And, and, and what does that say about those Englewood schools? Did you hear her? All right. All right. Anyway, everybody have a good time and thanks for coming out. We want to we want everybody to stand there right now because we want to take a picture with this crowd as a backdrop, all right? So you guys, come on. Oh,